The annual Foundation Awards recognize mentoring, partnership, communications, and thought leadership. They also highlight young people's initiatives and apprentice achievements. In 2020, they additionally honor pandemic contributions. Pray silence for Major General David Shoesmith. Hello, my name is Major General David Shoesmith. Uh, I'm the chairman of the RLC Foundation and I'd like to welcome you to the 2020 RLC Foundation Awards. Now normally we'd have a, a military style dinner but for obvious reasons we're unable to do that this year so we're holding the entire ceremony uh, on video. I'd like to start by giving you just a short background uh, to the Royal Logistic Corps Foundation, uh, why we set it up uh, and where we are today with it. Uh, in essence, we set up the foundation uh, about five years ago as part of a wider initiative led by the Master General of Logistics, General Poffley, uh, to create a more outward-looking Royal Logistic Corps. Uh, and there are a couple of reasons for that. Um, firstly, uh, we needed to recognise the evolution of commercial logistics uh, over quite a period of time, particularly their ability to operate at scale uh, and their ability to adopt technology. Uh, whilst the the RLC remains um, primus inter pares with regard to combat logistics. Um, everything that sits behind it, uh, the planning, the organisation, the structure, uh, the various agencies involved, um, has very much been uh, assumed, the leadership of that has very much been assumed by the commercial logistics world. And we need to, needed to understand what that looked like. Uh, and the other element uh, was really the increasing role of commercial logistic partners in the delivery of defence support. Uh, and taken together, we felt that the Royal Logistic Corps needed to be better informed, better networked, uh, to understand the language and to understand our approach to the delivery of logistics, which is characterised by hugely energetic, can-do people, uh, able to operate in a slightly chaotic environment and bring some sort of order to that chaos. Uh, and we've certainly found that our um, Royal Logistic Corps Foundation partners have valued the interaction with our people. I'm pleased with the way that Foundation has developed and the strength of the networks we've been able to establish as we've lowered the barbed wire that previously existed between us and the commercial logistics sector. So enough of the why about the Foundation. Uh, let's talk a little bit uh, about the what and that's what this award scheme is really designed to bring to life. Um, what we do with our awards is we recognise the achievements of our individual uh, soldiers and officers, our units and indeed industry uh, in the delivery of the wider logistics effort during the year. Tonight we introduce the sponsors and meet and praise nine award winners. The first RLC Foundation Award today is for mentoring support, recognising the soldier or officer within the Corps who has played a major support role for others, sponsored by DHL. As the world leader in the contract logistic market, DHL managed supply chains to reduce complexity for their customers. This is their core business, which includes warehousing, transportation, as well as key products such as LLP, real estate solutions, service logistics, packaging and e-commerce along strategic industry verticals, life sciences and healthcare, technology, consumer, retail, automobility and engineering and manufacturing. DHL have a UKL employee base of over 40,000, which includes many ex-service personnel who have proven to be a most valued resource within DHL complex operations. DHL's relationship with the RLC Foundation is a natural one given its focus on career enhancement of logistic professionals and supports DHL position as a gold status holder of the Armed Forces Covenant. And the winner is WO2 Kia from the 13 Air Assault Support Regiment. From St Vincent and the Grenadines, Warrant Officer Kia personally and professionally mentors, supports and develops others as a key member of the coordinating team devising a three-phase pioneering scheme, especially for the regiment's BAME community, where she is the CO's senior advisor and a leading member of the Army's West Indian Network, 
maintaining close links with her nation and promoting children's education sponsorship. 13 Air Assault Support Regiment. It is the UK's only very high readiness combined logistic and equipment support regiment. They stand ready to deploy anywhere in the world in support of 16 Air Assault Brigade, the UK's global response force at a moment's notice. The regiment comprises a number of unique and niche capabilities, which enables it to operate at reach in the most austere and demanding environments. As well as its support of 16 Air Assault Brigade, the regiment also maintains an extreme high readiness defence air dispatch capability which supports military and OGD operations around the world. Made up of personnel from seven cap badges and 16 main trades, it is a highly employable, versatile and permanently ready unit that typifies the best that the British Army has to offer. The second Foundation Award this year is a national one for support to RLC Professional Development, for that organisation from industry or academia which has contributed most significantly to the Foundation. Sponsored by Kuhn & Nagel. Kuhn & Nagel provide the storage, distribution and freight services to the Ministry of Defence and meet the logistic needs of the MOD in direct support of national security. They have supported Foundation events focusing on various aspects of logistics to help realise the Master General Logistics vision of promoting professional excellence within the Corps. Such events have included presenting at the Defence School of Transport based in East Yorkshire, where some 9,000 service people are trained annually on the multitude of MOD vehicle platforms and distribution management systems and providing a day of transport planning management in a commercial environment, as well as flying in their in-house innovations team from Hamburg, Germany, to demonstrate research for the next generation of transport advances. The winner is Lydos. Lydos is a Fortune 500 global IT, engineering and science business with over 36,000 employees worldwide. Their vision is to become the global leader in the integration and application of information technology, engineering and science to solve our customers' most demanding challenges. Lidos UK Logistics Division manages the 6.5 billion Logistics Commodities and Services Transformation Programme for the UK MOD implementing technological advancements for one of the world's foremost military operations, whilst generating millions in savings for government. Lidos has brought together an experienced team of private sector defence and logistic partners, with the global expertise to deliver the transformation required. Lidos is a corporate member of the RLC Foundation, The third Foundation Award is for the best regional partnership activity, recognising the most effective partnership programme between an RLC unit or specialisation and an industry partner. Sponsored by TVS Supply Chain Solutions. TVS are a global supply chain organisation providing consultancy services, integrated supply chain solutions, global freight forwarding and last mile supply across the automotive, defence, beverage, rail and utility sectors. TVS create, maintain and perform analysis on data from multiple applications and separate parts of a client's organisation. The value of what they do is an essential part of creating synchronised quality data associated to the end-to-end -end supply chain enabling informed decision-making. TVS have been supporting the UK Ministry of Defence since 1919, providing both the UK MOD and private contractors with advice and a comprehensive range of solutions to give advantage in the military environment. More recently, promoting digital transformation of the defence supply chain. Today, TVS manage more than 350,000 items, NATO stock numbers, 
across a wide range of military equipment, including armoured fighting vehicles, construction vehicles, workshop spares, warship consumables, clothing, food, fuel, medical equipment, field catering, pharmaceuticals and general engineering hardware. The winner is the Worshipful Company of Carmen. The Worshipful Company of Carmen, founded in 1517, is the world's oldest transport organisation. The company is chartered by the Crown and committed to the sovereign, city, industry and those in need through its two charities. It comprises some 600 members, freemen of the city and of this guild. With a commitment to the armed forces dating back to the Napoleonic Wars, the company was formally affiliated to the Royal Corps of Transport in 1975. It continues its association with the RLC, including a specific unit link with 19 tank transport squadron following its original 25 freight squadron connection, both designated the Carmens. The company annually confers the Sword of Honour on an RLC junior officer, the Carmen's Cup, to a Young Soldier of the Year and a 19 Tank Transport Squadron Award. In 2016, the company was the first city guild to sign the Armed Forces Covenant. Many ex-soldiers from RASC, RCT and RLC have served the court. And in 2015, the first serving officer to become master was Lieutenant Colonel Paul Holder the first serving officer to lead any of the city's 110 guilds since World War II. The company regards the Corps as a primary partner, celebrated by awards, appointments and events, and in cooperation wherever their related heritage and expertise enable mutual support. This award by the Foundation is for the best written article on a logistics subject submitted to the Foundation Review magazine. Sponsored by Lidos. The winner from 4 Regiment RLC is 2nd Lieutenant Amy Grieve. The article written by 2nd Lieutenant Grieve, a young officer tasked within a Corps Regimental Close Support Squadron team to give logistic and supply expertise to the NHS in respect of ventilator provision given structural communications differences which she rapidly understood, evaluated and described in clear, concise and entirely collaborative terms. 4 Regiment Royal Logistics Corps is a close support logistics regiment based at Dalton Barracks in Abingdon, Oxfordshire. The regiment forms part of 101 Logistics Brigade and on operations is part of the Army's War Fighting Division 3 UK Division. The regiment provides vital ammunition, fuel and rations to combat arms units on the front line in order to keep them and the battle moving. During the COVID-19 crisis, its personnel deployed on homeland resilience operations in support of the NHS and police. Transporting ventilators across London, it assisted prevent critical shortages. Supercharging warehouse operations, it helped upgrade PPE supply processes to handle unprecedented demand. Looking forward, Four RLC stand ready to sustain the fight against future threats at home and abroad. The Foundation's fifth award for Thought Leadership recognises the RLC, industrial or academic organisation, which has made the greatest contribution to the Foundation's Thought Leadership programme. And it's sponsored by Wincanton. Wincanton is the largest British third-party logistics 3PL company, providing innovative supply chain solutions to some of the world's most admired companies across a wide range of industries, including defence. 
with over 60 years experience supporting the defence industry, both domestically and overseas, Wincanton fully understands the rigours and complexity of supply chains within this important sector. As such, Wincanton designs and implements specialist solutions to support all aspects of the industry. These range from inbound supply chains to support major defence manufacturing operations across air, land and sea, through aftermarket solutions on a national and international basis, to bespoke packaging production for defence materials, and inbound and outbound transportation together with freight forwarding across the globe. Wing Canton is absolutely committed to the country's armed forces. They are proud of achieving the Bronze Award as part of the UK Ministry of Defence's Defence Employer Recognition Scheme, and they actively and enthusiastically participate in RLC Foundation events and initiatives. And the winner is... Kuhn and Nagel. The greatest companies are created by people who see the future as clearly as the present, who anticipate the challenges of tomorrow today, who are unwilling to accept routine when reinvention is required. People who want to live their passions, find their purpose, and prove their potential. The Foundation's Award for Junior Initiative celebrates the best idea or concept submitted by an officer below the rank of Major or soldier below the rank of Staff Sergeant. Sponsored by Foreland Shipping. Foreland Shipping Limited operates the UK Strategic Sea Lift Service for the Ministry of Defence. They provide four large bespoke roll-on roll-off vessels, fully manned with British sponsored reservists capable of providing 10,000 lane meters of critical equipment at short notice. They support a variety of tasks, including transport of early entry military equipment to intergovernmental support for essential transport, including nuclear, medical and Brexit standby. FSL are focused on developing their own service into the future and committed to defense logistics, as they are delighted to support the RLC Foundation Junior Initiative Award to encourage the next generation of senior logisticians. And the winner is Lance Corporal Alan Fuller from 17 Port and Maritime Regiment RLC. This junior NCO employed as Chief Engineer with Zulu Troop 52 Port Squadron within 17 Port and Maritime Regiment was responsible for maintaining Defence's eight Mexafloat rafts, its only heavy ship-to-shore capability, and realised his team's morale issues due to boring and repetitive manual labour. So he researched solutions, finding and assessing an eco-friendly industrial parts washer, drafted a business case and secured rapid approval implementation. 17 Port and Maritime Regiment RLC is the regular unit providing the Army's port, maritime and logistic enabling capability alongside 165 Port and Maritime Regiment RLC, our sister reserve unit. Held at readiness to provide UK Defence's expeditionary port capability 365 days a year, anywhere in the world, delivering scalable effects unloading a ship across a bare beach, as seen in the Caribbean during humanitarian relief operations, to operating in an established civilian port. Deploying, sustaining and recovering UK defences operations and exercises through the operation of the Sea Mounting Centre, the UK's permanent military port. The Foundation's Best Apprentice Award honours the apprentice who, nominated by a tutor, has shown the most commitment and effort as an apprentice. Sponsored by World Fuel Services. 
World Fuel Services is a global energy products and services corporation focused upon marketing, trading and logistics distribution. The company is a US origin Fortune 100 listed corporation operating across the land, aviation and marine business segments. And of particular interest to this evening's audience has a specific defence business focus supporting NATO in Afghanistan and the Baltics. With 5,000 colleagues operating at 8,000 service locations across 200 countries, WFS wants to be at the leading edge of a much more integrated relationship between the military and industry. In the coming year, as a signatory to the Armed Forces Covenant, the company will continue to offer work placements to selected service leavers, support reservists as part of a collaborative relationship with RLC reserve units and plans on hosting another industry military insight event. Being a partner of the foundation, WFS looks forward to playing a part in supporting the RLC strategy. This evening, the company is delighted to sponsor the Apprentice of the Year Award. And the winner is Lance Corporal Mirren Duffy from 29 Regiment RLC. Enrolled onto her ITLO apprenticeship while on a Class 2 Movement Controllers course at Bryce Norton, Lance Corporal Duffy spent six months in Germany with 69 Squadron. Proactive and prompt in every task, working in her own time while assisting units to relocate back to the UK, and similarly when back at South Cerny, constantly increasing her knowledge, completing her apprenticeship early and enrolling on her Log Ops Advanced Apprenticeship despite deployment to Kenya, working remotely. The 29 Regiment RLC has continued to provide essential enabling activities to exercises and operations across the globe to theatres including Eastern Europe, the Middle East, Africa and the Caribbean. Between April and September, the Joint Air Mounting Centre has carried out 221 tasks with 5,527 personnel being processed, alongside over 235,000 kilos of baggage, 700 weapons bundles and 152,000 kilos of freight and 33 vehicles. They have deployed 124 personnel across six operational theatres and 223 personnel to support the movement of troops, equipment and correspondence in 31 countries. Their regimental motto, In Adversity We Deliver, rings as true today as the day it was written. Our next Foundation Award recognises the individual or unit that has significantly enhanced the RLC's reputation through active engagement in logistic support for the national COVID-19 pandemic effort, sponsored by Babcock International. As one of the UK's largest organisations supporting the armed forces, Babcock has witnessed firsthand the unprecedented impact that COVID-19 has had on our own people, as well as service personnel and the defence industry as a whole. At a time of national crisis, the RLC has been truly a credit to the Ministry of Defence, stepping up as it always does, providing outstanding military logistics and delivering the support that our country needed. Now, it's fair to say the Nightingale Hospitals just simply couldn't have been established without the hard work and unwavering commitment of the RLC. This award therefore is prestigious and recognises the professionalism and discretionary effort made by all. Of course, we can't hope to acknowledge everyone involved, but the nominees for this award stand out in particular. It's a great privilege for both myself personally and for the Babcock team to be able to support and recognise this year's winner. Thank you. And the winner is 156 Regiment RLC. At the absolute vanguard of the military response, this regiment deployed 100 plus personnel to two national civilian centres at just 22 hours notice to support critical NHS PPE distribution, adjusting weekend training plans, dropping existing tasks, picking, packing and dispatching over 165 million items, 
clearing 20,000 backlog stock orders of 400 tonnes held up in the NHS supply chain. An unsung and unglamorous, politically and commercially sensitive but superlative achievement. Unprecedented and unpublicised by a unit of reserve personnel still in a trade re-roll programme meeting a vital national emergency need. The final RLC Foundation Award this year is for that unit or individual which has made the most significant logistic support contribution to combat the COVID-19 pandemic, sponsored by Lidos. And the winner is 2nd Lieutenant Bethany Capon from 27th Regiment RLC. Primarily based in Aldershot, 27th Regiment RLC, the Wolf Pack, is a large divisional logistic regiment, DLR, subordinated to 101 Logistics Brigade 3 UK Division. Following the formation of the Corps, 27th Regiment RLC became one of the 17 regular Royal Logistic Corps units. Over the past 27 years, 27 Regiment RLC has supported extensive operational activity including Op Herrick 14 and 19 as the Theatre Logistic Group, Op Telic, Op Tosca 29 to 2010, 2019 to 2020, and the provision of the Joint Logistics Support Unit to Op Olympics in 2012, as well as a plethora of UK-based readiness commitments. 27 Regiment RLC comprises four squadrons. 77 HQ Squadron, 8 Fuel and General Transport Squadron, 91 Supply Squadron, which are all based in Aldershot, and 19 Tank Transporter Squadron based in Bulford. When Op Rescript was enacted in March 20, the regiment still had over 228 personnel deployed on Op Tosca 31. However, with a rear operations group of over 400 personnel and the range of logistic expertise such as driver tank transporter operator to logistics supply specialists meant 27 Regiment RLC was ready and able to plan then deliver the immediate replenishment group at pace as part of Op Rescript. <laughs> Well, it's come to that time where I ought to say a few thank yous. Um, the first, of course, is to the organisers of this particular um, video stream. Um, not least because this is less than ideal. We'd have loved to have been sitting around a table with the silver out and uh, a fine wine. Uh, but the reality is we've not been able to. But I'd like to pay a particular thanks to the organisers. One, for their perseverance in making sure this takes place but secondly, for putting it all together uh, in the way that they have. It, uh, it is most appreciated. The second thank you is obviously to industry. I'd like to thank you, not just for your sponsorship of this particular event, where applicable, but actually uh, more profoundly for your support over the course of this year, which has been pretty fundamental to making sure that the foundation grows and moves on, and more of that in a moment. Of course, I'd like to say a huge thank you to our award winners. Um, all of your uh, awards are richly deserved. Indeed, they, uh, they really demonstrate the range and depth of those people involved, not just throughout our core, but also uh, with our industrial partners. And of course, uh, the awards themselves are finely judged um, and uh, the nominees uh, similarly reflects the depth of the commitment to the profession of, our, of logistics. Uh, to, again, to all of those, uh, a heartfelt congratulations uh, simply for being nominated. Now, this year, of course, has been dominated by COVID-19. And it's obviously exposed a number of things, not least uh, the lack of resilience in both the civilian and the military life more generally. It's highlighted, if never before, the importance of professional logisticians. 
And it's increased the awareness of the fragility of our systems, both in the military in particular, uh, but I would venture also in civilian life. But it's also meant we've been able to better understand ourselves. We know where our strengths and our weaknesses are. And in particular, one of those strengths is the adaptability of the logistic community in supporting uh, things in these extraordinary times. Uh, and it's done that whilst, in many cases, preserving the core outputs of the organisations, whether that's the National Health Service, the military, or indeed many industry partners who've stepped up and made a real effort to make sure the world continues to operate effectively. So as we look to the future, uh, quite clearly, I'm keen that the Royal Logistic Corps Foundation draws on the recent past. I know we've had some very good events, uh, not least uh, the look at the COVID response uh, more recently down in Tidworth. Uh, but we also need to recognise that there are new challenges over the horizon. Um, COVID-19 obviously has not gone away and continued need to maintain testing regimes and a distribution network as we head into this winter but also the potentially good news of being able to roll out a vaccination programme, not least under particular storage constraints. And of course, the security environment continues to be there. We've got the realities of Brexit will undoubtedly start to bite in the new year. Uh, and more broadly, you know, uh, the British government is starting to look at uh, reskilling our population to an extent. So the growth of the Royal Logistic Corps Foundation is of some comfort to me, not least because it is an organisation that I think has never been more uh, useful or more important. And it relies almost exclusively on the commitment of people both within the army, but more particularly to our professional uh, partners in industry who bring so much richness and currency into our world. So I thank you for the support. I hope, dearly hope, that in the very near future we will be able to sit round a table and do this perhaps in more uh, convivial circumstances. But for the moment, thank you for your commitment. Again, many, many congratulations to our award winners and I dearly hope we'll get to meet again soon. Thank you. And that concludes the Royal Logistic Corps Foundation Awards for 2020.